testimonies on what has happened after prayers and people have been uplifted, prepared for the second coming. Others have received the Holy Spirit because all what we are doing, we are preparing a people for the second coming. And because of that, I want to, first of all, uh, ask you five questions which can direct us on issue of prayer. When we say, let us pray, or we want to pray, we need to ask seven questions. Number one, what is prayer? What are we doing it? Why, what are we doing? Number two, why should we pray? It's important to know why you are praying. And number three, how to pray? Then we have, when should we pray? Where to pray? Who to pray to? And what then on prayer? Because what is prayer, we need to know is a communication. We are communicating with God. And if you have to do prayers, you need even to open the Bible. Because in every communication, it must be complete. When you pray, you are telling God or you are communicating to God. When you open the pages of the Bible, it is God speaking to you. And that is why before we pray, we have a verse which will prepare us to listen what God is saying. Then we tell God our needs at once. Then why should we pray? Very simple. Jesus commanded that we should pray. That one we should remember. Why should we pray? Because Jesus commanded that we should pray. Even Paul is saying, Paul says, we should pray without ceasing. So prayer is a command from God. Jesus himself said we should pray. And you remember, when he was asked how to pray, he is the one who taught his disciples how to pray. Our Father in heaven. So prayer is a command from God, from Jesus himself. It's a communication to God, whereby we listen from God speaking through the Bible, and we speak to God through prayer. It should be a complete communication. And how should we pray? The position, uh, if we need just to have to be in a position of preference. I've heard people saying, when you are want to pray, you have to kneel, you have to kneel. No, just be in a position of preference before God. That one you can read from the book called uh, Ministry of Healing, page 510. And I can quote, he say, it is not always necessary to bow down upon you, your knees in order to pray. Cultivate a heart of uh, talking to God while walking, while at work, at your daily labor. So we are being told that we can talk to God anytime, anywhere, wherever we are, we can. So where should we, when should we pray? When we ask the issue of when, it talks about time. The Bible says pray at all time. But this time we have planned that 9.30, no, it's 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 p.m. That is the time we'll be meeting for 10 days because we have agreed. We have agreed to meet uh, at 9 for prayer. So where, when to pray? Anytime which you plan because God is omnipresent. He is all, of, all the time. There is no time when God is absent. So we should pray all the time. But for this program, we have planned it should be in, in nine every day for 10 days. Where should we pray? Any place is appropriate for prayer. Any place is appropriate for prayer. This time, because of the technology, we are going to do it in our houses, in our room where you are, but we will have united prayer and the Lord will answer our prayers. So the issue of where to pray, God is omnipresent everywhere. Mm, God is everywhere. Now, and, and, and because of that, we are going to do it on Zoom and the Lord will answer our prayers. So who to pray to? We should remember all prayers should be passed through the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to praise God because the Bible says it is only the name of Jesus Christ, which is above uh, heaven, which can we can pray through that name. And because of that, I want to, uh, to introduce still, I want to introduce our days theme 
And you remember the whole theme is three angels. It is three angels. The whole theme, okay, is the three angel call to prayer. That is the whole, the whole theme. And our verse is in Revelation, the book of Revelation. Let me read Revelation 14. This is our key verse for the uh, Revelation 14, verses 6. The Revelation uh, has 6. About the, the angels. Okay, listen from King James. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heavens and earth, the sea and springs of water. Verse 8, and another angel, we are talking of three angels, and another angel, the second one, and another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she had made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Verse 9. Then I heard that angel, the third angel, because the angels are three, the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worship the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which has poured out full strength into the cup of indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Brethren, I want you to know when the Bible talks of the three angels, the message of these three angels, we must first of all know who is the angel. The word angel is coming from the Hebrew name Malak. And in the Greek, it's called angelos. The word Malak and angelos has the same meaning, and they have just one meaning, a messenger. So John, in the Revelation, he saw a messenger, and the messenger was having the everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel is the story of Jesus, how he was born, he died, he resurrected, he is going to come again, about our salvation. So we, you and I, we are the messengers. We are the angels. Yeah, and this message, we are taking it far and wide all over the world. And so the first angel is telling people how to worship God. That is about today. The second angel is saying that Babylon has fallen. That is about doctrine. And the third angel is talking about, it's saying that that angel followed saying with a loud voice, if anyone worship, this is about warning, about warning. And brethren, I want us to know that for the, the, this 11th year, the aim of 10 days of prayer is to prepare people of God to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit, because we cannot be able to be the messengers and take the message to the whole world if we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, according to our reading, we have what we call God promise, God promise. So when we enter into prayer, we should remember there is God promises which he has given us. Those promises are promises which we need to claim, the promises. Because God himself is saying, if my people who are called by my name who humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will give their sins and heal their land. That is a promise which we need to claim in these 10 days of prayer because God says he is ready to listen and to answer 
our prayers. Then there is another promise in Jeremiah 29, 13, and it says, and you will seek me and find me. When, when you search me, you will find me. That's a promise. And we need to claim those promises. So for 10 days, we need to claim God's promises, which he has promised. So when we go before God to communicate, as I have said, that prayer is about communication, we should know that God is able and he is ready to answer our prayers. So when we read our verse, which is revelation, we have seen the core, our context for this time, for these 10 days is under three angels' message. And for our reading today now, I want to enter into our day's reading. In our day's reading, uh, the theme of our day is urgency of prayer, urgency of prayer. I want you to know that God has great interest with the world which he created and he is concerned about everyone under the sun. And he would like everybody to be saved and to enter into the kingdom. And because of that, that is what we have seen. He has sent three angels. That angel is warning. The first angel is calling people to worship. And according to his promises, there is what I'm calling the urgency of prayer. Why very urgent? Because in Luke 11, verse 13, the Bible says, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? We have seen that God has promised and that we can claim God's promises. So according to Revelation, I want you to know that world population is expanding. The richest, the richest population of the world is 7.8 people, 7.8 billion people in the world. And the population is growing in one day through uh, getting babies, 3,385 3, babies are born each day, translating to 140 million a year. Just imagine. So imagine 7.8 and its growth, 140 million each year, how are we going to be able to reach these people and to prepare them to worship God? We are called the messenger, but how are we going to reach all these people? While well, even towns are growing, the population growing per day, we cannot be able. It is a doubting task. The only thing which can we can do. It's only praying that the Lord will give us the Holy Spirit for us to be able to reach the world. And his promise in Luke 11 is that he is ready to give us the Holy Spirit for us to be able to reach the world. Because before Christ come, two things must happen. People should have testimony that they have heard about Christ and others will receive Christ as their personal savior. And for that to happen, then we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why the church we have been praying now is for our 11th year that the Lord will give us the spirit to be able to evangelize, to reach the world, that each one in the world should hear that there is Christ who died for them and there is eternal kingdom. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, no amount of human effort is sufficient to reach our world for Christ. Human plans are powerless unless they are empowered by the Holy Spirit. We can plan, we can, up, we can come up with a good plan, but without the power of the Holy Spirit, our plans will never work. That is why we have 10 days of prayer, to pray for God to give us the Holy Spirit so as our plans will, will work. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit will this world 
be reached with the heavenly end time message. That one, you, I want you to get that. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit can millions in the great cities of the world be reached. We have cities which are much rooming all the time for them to get to, to be reached by the message of God. Ha -ha, there is no other way unless the Holy Spirit, unless the Holy Spirit is with us. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit can unentered countries resist to the gospel, which we have heard from the, third, the three angels, that it should reach people, the languages, and tongues. There are areas where we call them unentered, even here in the United States. It's unentered. There are areas where there is no, there is no the, the church is not there. The message has not reached there. But it is only through the Holy Spirit that we can be empowered to be able to reach the unentered areas. Only through the power of the Holy Spirit can we enter the countries which have resistance. We have countries where they resist, they resist Christianity. Countries like if you go to Middle East, they are resisting. It is only through the Holy Spirit that these countries which are resisting, they can open doors for Christ. It is only through the power of the Holy Spirit can our communities be reached. Mm -hmm. And the incredible good news is that God is already working in this difficulty, difficulties reach. He invites us to seek his power. And when he give, when we receive his power, we will be able and that is why today we are seeing that there is a promise. And Jesus said, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit, what we need? We are need the church needs the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit comes into our life, into our church, Two things will happen. The spirit has gift of the spirit and the spirit has, car has what we call the fruit of the spirit. The gift will enable us to reach the unentered area, to reach the countries which have closed door for Christ because we will have what we call the gifts. The gift is about speaking tongues. The gift is about healing. The gift is about how to, uh, to do evangelism. And the same spirit, we, we are the messengers, as we saw that we are the angels as messengers. It will change our character. And I want you to know there's nothing we'll take to heaven except our character only, the fruit of the spirit, the change which we'll get. So we are praying for the Holy Spirit to do two things, to help the church, I and you, to be able to reach out and to help ourselves to change our character, for our characters to grow, to be like Christ. So the Bible is clear. And Jesus said, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit? So God is ready. He is promising to give us the Holy Spirit. The promise of the Holy Spirit, remember, it was given. If you read in the Acts of the Apostle, it says, the Spirit, the promise of the Spirit is not limited to any age or to any race. Mm -hmm. Not limited from any age or from any race, any race or from any country or from any people group. It is not limited. Christ declares that the divine influence of the Holy Spirit was to be with his followers unto the end. If you have chosen Christ as your personal savior, there is a promise which we need to claim, which Christ promised, that he is ready to give us the spirit. It does not matter about our area, where we are coming from, our age, our race, any country, but if we are followers of Christ and pray 
the Lord will fulfill his promise. He will give us the, the power of the Holy Spirit. Like the way he did the time of Pentecost, when he gave the apostle, the comforter, and they were able to move out and give service to the world. Even now, we as followers of Christ, if we give ourselves holy heartedly to Christ and pray for the Holy Spirit, and that is the reason the church has taken us through 10 days of prayer for 12, we are here going to that 11th year, that God is ready to give us the Holy Spirit for us to be able to reach out and for the Holy Spirit to change and give us character of Christ. And for that, for today, we should know that there is urgency. It is urgent. It is urgent for us to reach out. It is urgent for us to, 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 to be able to prepare the world, which is 7.8 billion, to be ready for Christ's return. And the only way of doing it is only going to our knees before God and pray for the Holy Spirit. And I'm happy to pronounce that the Lord himself has said that we claim this promise. He is ready to give us the Holy Spirit for us to be able to do evangelism, to reach out wherever we want to. As a church, we are given the great commission. And if we receive the Holy Spirit personally, and if we receive the Holy Spirit as a church, as an individual, then we'll be able to reach out for Christ and prepare the people. We will be the angel, the first angel who, who said, fear God and worship him for the hour of his judgment has come. Not that the hour will come, but has come to prepare people for the second coming. So for today, as we go to pray, we want to pray. And in our prayer, we want to know the most important prayer we need to, to, to take before God is for us as individuals to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, to, get, to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which will change our character. Number two, is to pray that the Lord will give us the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we can be able to reach out and prepare people for the second coming. As a church of Osigo, if we go before God and pray, the Lord will hear our prayers and the Lord will do marvelous things because he is the only one through the Holy Spirit he can reach this population, huge population, 7.8 billion, it is only through the power of the Holy Spirit. So today, as we go to, to pray, and pray, I know uh, the one who is leading us will lead us on prayer, but I want to pray because of the, the, because of the message that we need the Holy Spirit for us to be able to reach out for, for Christ. Let us pray. And let us give ourselves to the Lord to bless us. And in these 10 days of prayer, we may come out with character of Christ and prepare others for the second coming. Let us pray. Our Father, we want to thank you because of 10 days of prayer. You have been with us and you have been with your church for 11 years with 10 days of prayer as we open each and every year since 2011. For now, Lord, in 2022, we want to open this year with 10 days of prayer, and we want to pray as a church of Wasigo. And the people who are here, who, whom we have decided to be, to be in this prayer at nine every evening, that Lord, you may give us the reign of the Holy Spirit. We want to pray as claiming what you have promised. We want to claim your promise. You have said that, Lord, 
if we desire the Holy Spirit, you are ready to give us. And you have promised, Lord, that when we call upon you in times of need, any time you are ready to take care of us, we want to pray that Jesus, as you have promised the promise of the Holy Spirit, that you may bless the church and help us to live a life which glorifies you, preparing others for your second coming. Help us to be the angel, the messenger, those who are going to prepare people for your second coming. Help us, Lord, to be identified as the angels in the revelation where we are. We want the world and prepare people for your second coming and because of your judgment, which is ahead of us. Thank you for hearing our prayer. And Father, as we claim your promises of Luke 11, 13, how we pray that every day you give us your Holy Spirit to be able to present your name or to present you everywhere we are in our workplace, in our home, to our brothers and sisters, to our relatives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Kamutu. Uh, I was blessed, and I'm hoping everybody else was blessed. Uh, I'm hoping that we pray for this Holy Spirit that will enable us to go and enter these virgin areas, virgin lads, and entered areas. So thank you so much uh, for blessing us with the word of God and showing us the urgency of prayer through the three angels' message. So at this moment, we'll go to a season of prayer. And um, I see we are about uh, 40, 40 on the chat room here. So with being so many, I will have us uh, just, instead of us, all of us giving us a prayer request, please just mention your prayer request in your prayers. And then we'll try to make our prayers short so that everybody who wants to pray can have a chance. And uh, when you're praying, uh, the first person praying uh, will start. And then the rest, you don't have to start the way we address God because it's a continuous prayer. And also don't finish because it's continuous. The last person will say in the name of Jesus and finish. Uh, so at the moment, we'll start with... Uh, uh yeah before we start the, the prayer okay yes so as I we, have, yeah sorry go ahead i had some prayer points can i share them yes please okay let me share them here yeah like i think sister like Sister Gladys has mentioned, we're going to pray a continuous prayer. So please don't mention, don't end the prayer. So you don't have to say our Father in heaven, just mention in one sentence. In less than one, don't, don't pray five or seven sentences. And here are our prayer points, which they gave us for day one. So day one, uh, one thing which we noted is that why are we doing this prayer? Somebody might be asking, no, we want one or three people to be selected. Here is the reason. The spirit of prophecy tells us that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. So note that we are agreeing something and it shall be done because God has promised in heaven. That's according to the book of Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, right now we are going to be gathered here in the name of God. Remember during the time of Esther, they said, let all of them fast and let's pray together. So when we pray a communal prayer together, it's more powerful than even the individual prayer. See what the spirit of prayer says. The promise is made on condition that the united, when we are united, the united prayers of the church are offered 
And in answer to these prayers, there may be expected a power greater than that which comes in answer to private prayer. So the power given will be pro proportionate to the unity of the members and their love for God and for one another. We pray that we love one another. We pray that we be united in this prayer. That's from Manuscript Releases, Volume 9, page 303. So in day one, we're going to have different prayer points for each day. So you're going to pray and we're going to start with praying the word, God's word. We're going to ask, Father, give me the Holy Spirit. You will ask in your own words. You're going to ask, I want to be among those who are asking and I'm also asking, do not pass me by. So we're going to have at least three to five minutes in each. Just make your prayer one sentence. And then after that, I will moderate you to go to the second point and the third and the fourth and the fifth. And then we shall finish by you listening and responding. So let's just go into the session of prayer. We just pray one sentence prayers. Each one of us just take a minute to just pray one sentence and we continue like that. Do not fear when we are silent. Just jump in when you hear that it's silent. Let's go into the session of prayer. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So you unmute and let's pray. I'm going to begin you off, and then the next can come in and then we can pray. Just one sentence prayer. Do not go into in the name of the name Jesus Christ. I pray. Just pray your sentence and then we shall finish when we have finished the last seventh point. Let's be united and let's just try to do that in an organized way. Let's pray now. And now, God, we're coming before you, and all your children are now gathered in order to pray as your promise has said, that where two or three are gathered in my name, you will answer their prayer. Now, as we begin this prayer, Father, and as your children are going to mention, and we're going to go through one point at a time, and each of us is going to pray at this moment, it's now my turn, Father, and I'm praying asking for the gift that you promised in your scriptures in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. And we see how much more Father give us this Holy Spirit. We ask for your Holy Spirit, Lord, for you promised, and we know that all the promises in the book are ours. Lord, give us the power of the come through. Father God, give us the wisdom. May you continue strengthening our faith in you, O oh Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, delivered from delivers from the power of darkness. God, we ask the power of the Holy Spirit to help us to know Your Word. Lord, our Father, feel we pray. Father, we praise you for the promise that if we ask anything in your name and according to your will, you will give us. We are asking the hope, you to give us your Holy Spirit so that we can be able to do your work. Amen. We pray for your guidance. May you give us wisdom. Take care of our church and each one of us. Give us good health. Take care of our needs, whatever we need, like peace of mind and good marriages and good life. Take care of our health. May you sanctify us, O oh Lord, with your power and with your Holy Spirit in every living. God help us and save us. Thank you for the willingness to give us the Holy Spirit more than even our fathers are willing to give us bread. We 
Thank you, we and we praise you. We ask that you keep us faithful until the second time when you come for us. We uh, ask, we ask you, God, to protect us from all evil things uh, which we are facing. We ask you, Lord, to give us wisdom so that we can know how to spread your word. And Lord, we ask you that you protect us from the COVID-19 that is spreading. Give us good health and shower us with your blessings this year. Protect us from the evil one. Show us the right things to do. Thank you. And now let's go into the second prayer point. At this moment, I want to request you to just thank God and praise God. Give thanks for some specific blessing and praise God for his goodness, some goodness he has done to you. Just mention it in one sentence and that's it. God, we thank you and thank you and thank you for bringing us to a new year 2022. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your promises never fail. We praise you. Thank you, Lord, because you have stood with us since, 20, since 2021. We are just at 2022. You said we need you to work with us. Thank you, Lord, for your love and your tender mercies. Without that, we don't know where we would be. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the family. Thank you, Father God, for having your church family pray for my sisters and the people of power. And I would just like to thank each and every one of the people of And let you God bless. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the families that you've given us, and even the church family, and now the Zoom family. We thank you, for we can meet you every evening. Thank you, Almighty oh God, for the message that you showed to us 2021 and 2022. What is to lead something well through and to your presence? We thank you so much. Thank you for your son, Jesus, because through him, we will make to live in eternity with you. Thank you, Lord, for calling us your children, for Father Lord protecting us and guiding us, even when we wander away from thy presence. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us and for healing our diseases. Thank you, Lord, because you know the children, the spirit that we have gone far away from you. Thank you, God, for answering all, all of our, our prayers and sending your son to die for us. Thank you, Lord, for your love toward us, for nothing can separate us from your love, not death, not principalities, not angels, nothing to come or nothing present. Amen. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. At this moment, I want us to go to the prayer point number three and think about the confession uh, take a few minutes just one minute in private in your heart just confess something in your heart talk to god as a friend and tell him god please forgive me because of this weakness and that weakness this sin which i committed and that sin just a, a moment of silence do not talk do not do anything just one minute to confess and a private sin which you have committed and thank God for his forgiveness.
Amen. Amen. And for the fourth prayer point, just unmute and ask God to grant you wisdom for some challenge you are facing, some, some decision which you have to make ahead. Maybe you want some house, you want to raise up a child, maybe you want to know where to go and live, maybe you are planning to move for country living, maybe you want to get married, or you want to change your lifestyle on food how to cut or add weight, how to lead as a, as a church leader. Let's talk to God and ask him in one sentence. And Father, now we are coming before you, asking, I'm asking for wisdom for all the church leaders and church workers. Our great Heavenly Father, in this morning, we ask in your direction, your wisdom in those who are in marriages, help them to keep the marriage in your direction. Mm. And those who are sick to so let them, even further, seek you first and your direction. Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, we ask that you may help us so that we may be able to discern the thing in. Wisdom, which should not watch our marriages and the great wealth family. Lord, we ask Father you in, heaven, give up. in managing our finances. Father in heaven, we. Go ahead. Yes, Pastor oh, Jen. Uh, Father in heaven, give us the wisdom so that we, we can be able to prepare our families for your second coming. Mm. Father in heaven, give us wisdom and knowledge on how to raise up our children. Mm. Heavenly Father, granting, I'm asking your wisdom to know how to live in these last days, and especially one heavy on my heart about country living. Mm. Father, help us to be involved in reaching souls for your kingdom these last days. Because of time, I'm just going to go to prayer point number five. Let's just pray for our church, pray for the regional world church, and for the new church plants. Just let's take a moment to just do that prayer in one minute. Father, I also pray for the church of Otsiko in particular, which has started and is ministering to the whole world. Bless them and fill them with your Holy Spirit. May you, oh my God, continue showing your love and your tenderness to your church in this last days as they are seeking your direction to work for you. Let mm -hmm. them bring your grace as the devil also trying to bring arms in your church. But may the Holy Spirit cover your church. Mm -hmm. My prayer, Lord, is that the whole church may un unite and be one so that when you come back, you find a people ready to receive you. 
Mm. Father, I echo that prayer of Osigo. May you reach to all our neighbors in this right county that they may know you, God. We pray for the church leaders. We pray for our pastor, uh, Pastor Oyaro. We pray for uh, Pastor Kennedy. And we pray for their families. We pray for the family also of our church elders and the church leaders. We pray for the pastors within this group also. Lord, we ask that you keep the church faithful to the duty that you gave it. That it be a channel in which men and women will be saved into your kingdom. It's you, God, who put the people in leadership. And may your Holy Spirit help them, comfort them, teach them what to teach to your servants and to other people. Let them be protected with your blood. My prayer, Lord. Go ahead. Before the leaders from general conference up to the local church. Mm. Sister Gladys. My prayer, Lord, is that you may hold the winds of strife, that we may be able to invite many to your kingdom. Amen. And now let's just go to our sixth prayer point. Let's pray for the local church requests pray for the current needs of the church members you have that family member who you have always wanted to pray for you have that neighbor who is a drunkard you have that family which is about to divorce or they are always fighting pray for them pray for those children who are disobedient pray for the suffering neighbors just pray for somebody intercede so let's go into a moment of intercessory father in heaven at this moment, your children are going to mention different intercessor prayers, and I begin by mentioning my 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 brothers and sisters back home in Uganda. Hear them. Lord, I present my brother Ezekiel to you, who's battling alcoholism. Lord, come through for him. Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for a true revival and a reformation in our local church all over the world. And the Father, may you hear our prayer. Yes, mm. Father in heaven, we pray for all those ones who were baptized last year. May you take care of them. May you strengthen them. Father, we pray for our kids to be obedient. I know your word. Thank you, Father. We ask you for the spiritual growth of your people in local churches everywhere. Mm -hmm. You said you know your sheep. And the sheep, when they, if they do know you, they, they are going to hear your voice. If your Holy Spirit dwell in them. Father, we pray for our children who have left the church. Please bring mm. them or it's too late. Mm -hmm. For this last minute, I just want to ask Pastor Kamuntu to just... Pick one word or two, and then we shall all say amen together. <clears throat> Our speaker, Pastor Kamundo. Okay, our speaker is not around. Pastor Yaro, please just finish it up, and then we shall say amen. Thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayers. We praise and glorify you. Thank you for the prayers of your children. And above all, Father, may you remember us in the prayers of your children be heard. And above all, God, may you unite us together to work with you in your fine yard until you come to take us home. We pray in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. God's children Amen. will say Amen. 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 Amen.